So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us in a very beautiful hadith, it's, it's an analogy. He says, the Arabic is, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَمَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Every one of you is a shepherd and they're responsible for their flock. And he goes on to say, this is just a piece of the hadith. This is found in Bukhari and Muslim. He says, a man is a shepherd and he is responsible over his flock. A woman is a shepherd and she is responsible for her flock. And a servant is a shepherd. He is responsible over the wealth of his master. Everyone is responsible for something. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this hadith, he clearly mentions that a man's responsibility, a husband's responsibility is one, and a wife's responsibility is another. This is what he's basically saying. That you, you have your own flock, you need to tend to that flock. This being said, we understand in Islam there's going to be some type of uh, dynamic that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has intended. So we're going to go into that inshallah. Uh, in some detail. So what is the Islamic household dynamic? I've just made some titles here um, to help. Uh, it's not something that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam necessarily said. So first we look at the husband, right? And you know, I think in today's language people call everybody a king, right? Don't they do that now? Like, hey king, and, and the term is just, they don't do that anymore? Oh, they call, they call a queen to everybody. Yeah, short king. Yeah, just make him feel better. Okay. Yeah, I think that, the, that you shouldn't use the term loosely like that, but every Muslim husband, a man, is a king of his house. He's the king of his house. He's also the caretaker, and he's also the leader. And these three titles that we can uh, use to understand what the husband's role is in Islam. So now, looking further into that, what's a leader? Right? What do we consider to be a real leader? Is a, a leader someone who you know, earns money? Is that it? You know, does that make you a leader if you have a lot of money? Or perhaps if you have a lot of knowledge, does that necessarily make you a leader? Not really. Rasulullah actually says in one hadith, Sayyidul Qawm Khadimuhum. The leader of a group is the servant of the group. As the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, right? The leader of a group is the servant. Meaning, if you are to be a leader, you have to understand every single person that is your subordinate. You have to understand their needs. You have to find out what they want. You have to serve them. So this whole mindset where I'm working all day, I'm earning the money. When I come home, I'm a king. I'm going to you know, pick up my feet, lay down, you know, uh, drink a soda, watch TV. This is not what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying. In fact, what he actually wants men to do is to have two jobs. It's not easy. Right? One job outside, one job inside. When you come home, don't think you're off. Yes, you can relax, inshallah, and the environment's going to be relaxing. But you're still working. Don't think you're ever off. And you know, we're only off when we die. That's what Jannah is for. And so if you really have that belief in Jannah, you'll understand that rest comes after we die. And this life is a life of working. So we're working for Allah all the time. We're working for our family when we go to work in the, in the daytime to earn money. And when we come home, we're, we're working as a husband as well. In a healthy marriage, issues are discussed and compromises are made. The final decision, however, should lie with the husband. So when it comes to decisions, things are discussed. Right? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam discussed with his wife. So we'll talk about that. So the Islamic concept of a husband is not that he just makes the decisions without anyone knowing. Actually, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would make mashwara or he would seek counsel from his wives. And I'll give you some examples of this. And tomorrow, inshallah, if we have time, we're kind of a little, a little bit delayed. Uh, I think later on we'll ask everyone if you're okay with extending some bit. Um, tomorrow is just all about looking at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he did. So let's, uh, one hadith here. I'll share with you. And that is an example of what a husband should do. Aisha radiallahu anha, she states that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be in the service of his family. When he's at home, he's in the service of his family. And when the time of salah came, he would go for salah. After which, he would be at the service of the public. So when does Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really rest? Sometimes when he's at home. 
Right? So there's a hadith where she, some people came to Aisha, they're asking, what does Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do at home? Because they obviously can't go in his home. She said that, you know, sometimes he sews his clothing. Sometimes he mends his shoes. Sometimes he's cleaning. Sometimes he's helping out. And when it comes time for salah, he goes immediately. And then people come to him, they ask him questions. That's his whole day. And then at night, you think he's uh, relaxing and resting. He's actually doing tahajjud for hours and hours. This was his daily life. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was always at the service of someone. And of course, he would take some you know, uh, breaks here and there, but very short. So this tells us that the husband, when he comes home, he's still in the service of his family. So again, Sayyidul Qawm Khadimuhum, the leader of a people is the Khadim, the servant. These are very high standards that we have to live up to. Uh, and it's not easy. So actually, the easy route would be not to get married. If you can just control those desires, then you'll have an easy life. Don't get married is the, is the lesson. <laughs> Don't get married. Right? That's the lesson. It's, it's really hard. If you actually knew what you had to do, you'd probably think twice. There's this one hadith that's kind of correlated where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was choosing people to be judges, to sending them out amongst the knowledgeable Sahaba. So one person said that, I want to be a judge. And then he said, if you want to really be a judge, and he started mentioning all the different uh, ramifications of being a judge. And he also mentioned that anyone who is made a judge, it's as if they've been slaughtered without a knife. I mean, not literally slaughtered, but as if you're, you're, you're on the precipice of danger. And he started mentioning all of this, these dangers of being a judge. Now imagine the rationale here. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is talking to people who he wants to become judges, but he's telling them, don't be judges. You're gonna, it's like you're going to be slaughtered without a knife and every small mistake Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to task. So then the person was like, well, I don't want to be a judge anymore. And then he says, fine, but what I said still stands. So same thing here. If after all of this, you don't really want to be a husband, then it still stands. This is what you have to do. Same thing with a woman. She has a lot that she has to do.